All right, welcome back folks. It's time for our next 6.5 Grendel video. And I wanna to return to a bullet that we tested two videos ago. It's the 140 grain Hornady Match Boat Tail Hollow Point. Pretty heavy for the Grendel, but the last time we tested it, we were using Accurate 2520 and Power Pro Varmint. We shot some really good groups with this bullet. So I wanna continue the testing today, the powder is going to be Vitivori N540. So the Vitivori 500 series powders are their high energy line. These guys uh, pack a lot of punch. And Vitivori has got a bunch of load data for 6.5 Grendel. And they cover heavy bullets. And this is the highest velocity option they show. So I'm expecting pretty good velocities today. And God bless Vitivori on this because... Most of the manuals, most of our data sources, they top out. Some of them don't go past 123 grain bullets. Some of them go to 130s, but data for 140s is really hard to come by. Now this video is gonna be just a little bit different. Normally we, we, you know, we, we pick two powders and shoot five groups with each powder. Today, this is the only powder we're gonna be testing because the testing in this video is kind of tying into another video I'm working on about barrel harmonics. So what we're gonna do is shoot, we're gonna shoot 25 shots with the suppressor on the gun, and then we're gonna shoot 25 shots without the suppressor on the gun. Our earlier testing with uh, with our 18 inch fax and barrel that we're shooting showed a pretty significant point of impact shift and also group size with and without the suppressor. So so that's why we're, uh, that's why we're doing this. I need the target from today's video for another video, basically. So as I mentioned, Vitivori has got low data. They've got the 136 grain Cinar L, Lapua Cinar L, the 139 Cinar, the 140 Naturalis, and the 144 grain full metal jacket Bowtail from Lapua. So hopefully I've put this up on the screen where you can see the, uh, the max charges for those. They're all around 28 or a little bit higher. What I wanna shoot today for a max charge is 27.5. Little bit lower than they went with some of the bullets. But first time we're shooting this powder in Grendel, I don't really know what to expect. So I'm hoping not to get in trouble. I also wanna cover a pretty wide range. So I wanna shoot 0.5 grain increments. So that means 25.5 is our starting charge. We're working up to 27.5. Our primer for today is gonna to be the CCI number 41. In the last video, we shot the Federal uh, GM205M primer and it did really well, but I'd kind of forgotten about that. And by the time I realized what was going on, I had already primed these cases with CCI 41s. So I kind of wish we were using the Federal, but you know, the cases are already primed and I'm not going to waste them. Speaking of cases, this is brand spanking new Hornady brass. So never been fired. I did go ahead and run them through a sizing die to make sure our neck was nice and round, chamfered and deburred the case mouth and primed them with CCI 41s. These guys are ready for powder. Now for overall length, in the last video we shot 2.260 and we had found that with this bullet that gave us about 85 thousandths of jump to the lands. We've got a little bit more room in our magazine, in our 6.5 Grendel magazines. We can go out to about, I think, 2.275. So let's back off that just a little bit. Let's go with 2.270 today. So that's a, that gives us about 75 thousandths of jump to the lands. So that's it. There's our load data. That's the plan for today. I am going to get our charges weighed out and I'll see you guys over at the bullet seating die. All right, so bullet seating requires a bullet seating die, I've heard, so there's that. This is a Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die. So raise the ram, screw it down until things bottom out, and then we back it off. At least one turn is what the instructions say. So there we are. All right, the adjustment's backed off, so let's see if we can get this party started. So our target overall length is 2.270. But in the last video, we were using the Hornady bullet comparator and our number was 1.665. So we should be able to dial in 1.675 on the comparator. And then we'll, we'll uh, verify overall length of the tip here in just a second. All right, I'm about 200 thousandths too long right now. Okay, let's try that. Okay, we're at 1.678. Remember 1.675 was the target we were gonna go for. So let's seat a couple of them. Now the case fill is not too bad. Here in the, with the first charge, I do feel a little bit of powder moving in the case after seeding. But once we get up to our max charge, we're gonna be, we're gonna be at least a, a little bit compressed. Yep, I need to come down about three thousandths. That should be just about perfect. 
may have gone a thousand too far, seeing a whole lot of 1.674s here. Yep, but that's okay. Now let's measure to the measure to the tip of the bullet. Now I must have been cheating a little bit in the last video. So like, you know, instead of 2.260 last time, it was more like eh, 2.263 to 2.265 because yeah, up here I'm seeing 2.273 and 74, that sort of thing. I do have a magazine here somewhere. Let's just see if they fit. If they fit, we'll stick with it. Nah, not quite. I am dragging the nose just a little bit with a couple of these guys. No big deal. Let's go down another, eh, let's play it safe. There's four thousandths more on the die and run them back through again. All right. I sure know how to drag out a bullet seating operation, don't I? All right, they're all fitting in there now, but just barely, which is what we want. So let's see what that reading is on the bullet comparator. It's looking like 1.672 or maybe a long 1.671. Like eh, if I wiggle it just right, a lot of times I see 1.6715. Yeah, there you are right there. We'll call it 1.672. Let me write that down. So these bullets do have pretty irregular me plats, right? The tip of the bullet's a little bit janky. So I'm seeing a range all the way from, here's the shortest one I see out of my first 10 that I've seeded, 2.266, but the majority seem to be 2.270 or 2.271. So just about right, you know, at our original target. Good. Now, what I wanna do before I let you guys go, this is the max charge of 27.5 grains. It sounded a little bit crunchy. Overall length to the, of this guy to the tip is 2.280. So that's definitely longer. And to the ogive, it's 1.676. So that's about four thousandths longer overall length with the compression of our max charge. So as I move forward with my bullet seating, I'll be checking that with each charge and making a little tweak to the seating die as necessary. All right, folks, I think that's about it. We've beat this dead horse enough. So I'll just see you guys out on the range. All right, folks, so I wanna start out without the suppressor. We'll shoot our five groups and then we'll switch and do it all over again with the suppressor on. This is an 18 inch Faxon heavy fluted barrel. I'm expecting about three minutes of angle shift when we put the suppressor on the groups are going to drop by three minutes so i've got the gun zeroed just a little bit high these first groups here without the suppressor i'm expecting them to be maybe just above the orange dots so hopefully if you're looking at a target right up there if this all works out maybe i'm only showing you part of the orange dot and then the groups are, are going to be above it if that's not the way it looks right now that means that this plan did not work so our first charge weight here with vitivori n540 is 25.5 grains let's see if it'll shoot Okay, so velocity 2128, that's good. Starting nice and low. The brass looked fantastic. And that's actually a pretty darn good group for this gun without the suppressor. We've had problems finding accuracy when we take the suppressor off this barrel. So this isn't bad. Hopefully the trend continues here. So velocity bumped up to 2160, and it's interesting, we had the exact same standard deviation number and the exact same ex extreme spread number. The unfortunate part is that they're pretty crappy numbers. Moving on, 26.5. All right, so I'm starting to see a little bit of an ejector mark on the brass, and our, our velocity still seems okay. So I think it's, it might be gas related. So I did turn my gas block all the way up, so I'm basically giving it full gas. So I'm hoping that little bit of brass damage is gas related. I don't know, it's not so bad that I'm worried yet. We're gonna go ahead and move on. Next up is 27.0 grains.
Okay, so I didn't see much change on the brass. Still a little bit of an ejector mark. Maybe I'm overreacting, I think I am. Like nothing's raised up any burrs. So I wanna go ahead and shoot this last group. 27.5 grains. All right, so the ejector marks got a little bit worse. Still no burrs, like I didn't, uh, I didn't junk any brass or anything, but still, you know, a little more pressure signs than I would like to see. Standard deviation of 3.6 and an extreme spread of eight feet per second on that last group. Amazing. But the groups are crap, right? So what I need to do now is put on my magical group shrinking suppressor. I'm gonna adjust the gas back to where it should be for suppressed use, and we'll do this whole thing over again. And hopefully the groups will be a lot better. All right, folks, our suppressor on, our gas is readjusted. And it's time to start over at 25.5 grains. So last night, right about this same time after work and the same light levels, I was shooting 223 and my chronograph started giving me a bunch of uh, weird readings. So I'm gonna continue to collect data from the chronograph, but don't be surprised if it goes a little bit funky at some point while we're shooting these. At least we've got what I feel like is good, accurate data for the first five groups. All right, 25.5 grains. All right, so I guess I didn't get the gas set just right. Crap. I don't want to tear up this brass, so I'm going to make another quick uh, gas adjustment. Okay, let's try this again. And by quick adjustment, I have to take off the suppressor, remove the hand guard, adjust the block, and then put it all back together. It's a bit involved here. This gas block and this uh, hand guard just don't really go together very well. All right, here we go. All right, good, we cycled them all, we locked the bolt back. Fantastic. So the velocity on that first shot is what screwed up our standard deviation. I, I, it looks like I'm still getting good readings from the chronograph. Had an average of 2151, but the first shot was uh, quite a bit lower than the rest. Can we blame that on the gas setting? I don't know, man. I wouldn't think so. All right, 26.0 grains is next. Okay, 26.5. All right, so that group got a little bit crappy. 27.0 is next. All right, folks, so our groups have gone to crap, but the biggest problem is that here with the suppressor on, my pressure signs have shown up earlier. Like the light ejector marks showed up on the second group, where without the suppressor, they were in the third group. And this last group of 27.0 are pretty bad, getting a little bit of a burr on the extractor side. So I'm done. I don't wanna shoot this last group. The groups are crap anyway, so there's not much point. So let's wrap it up here. We'll get back to the bench, try and make sense of it. All right, folks, let's have a look at some brass, and we'll start with our fourth row. I know a couple of these started having some ejector marks. Let's see if we can find them. And, of course, the first ones I picked don't have uh, any problems, except, yeah, this one little dude, you can see just a little bit of a ring there. So it wasn't too bad. Next row was our max charge without the suppressor. A little something down there going on. Bit of an ejector mark on that side, and you might be able to see a faint straight line on the extractor side. So nothing terrible here without, you know, this was without the suppressor, nothing major going on. Certainly no bent rims or, or anything like that, but just a little something. Now, when I threw on the suppressor, those minor marks showed up earlier. And then this was the last 
charge we shot. The fourth fourth group with the suppressor, 27.0 grains. Things started getting bad. Ejector mark there, and then this straight line here on the extractor side. I don't think the rim's bent, or if it's bent, it's not so bad that it's junk, but a little bit of a burr right there. Similar deal with this other guy. You can see a little, little burr got raised up on the extractor side and distinct mark on the ejector side. I mean, a little bit of gas tuning with the suppressor on, you know, might clear this up. This, this kind of sucks, man, because we had the gas dialed in perfectly with this gun for use with the suppressor, but I really needed to do the test today, so I hated to start cranking on it, but it is what it is. We might need a little bit of tuning to get it back, but I just didn't want to go any further than this. Like I said, this, this brass is still okay. Not a big deal, but I just didn't feel safe shooting that next group. So these were pretty disappointing results today. I was expecting better. Let's go back to the last video we shot this bullet in and have a look at that target. You can see eight of our 10 groups were under an inch. Now these were all with the suppressor on. We had six groups of 0.7 something or better. So the bullet was just really impressive last time. And I thought N540 might be a really good combo with it, but I guess my gun just doesn't really like this combo. You'll have that. A good powder and a good bullet, sometimes, man, they still aren't going to shoot well in your particular gun. So here's today's target with the groups measured out. So the top the top row without the suppressor, the fourth group was actually the best, 1.410. But three of them there were just over 1.4, the first, the second, and the fourth. They're all pretty crappy, man. Our top velocity was 2271, and that's just about the same as we got in the last video with Accurate 2520. 2279 was the highest velocity we got to in, in, the, uh, in the last test with this bullet. So the velocities were there. So we screwed the suppressor on, and it looked like uh, we judged the point of impact shift just about right. I think it was uh, maybe a little over three MOA downward shift whenever we put the suppressor on, which is what we anticipated. Our first two groups started off halfway decent, just under an inch. Like, that's decent shooting. And then they just got crappy. Now I'm wondering, you know, our, our charges got compressed and our max charge was pretty heavily compressed. And I'm wondering maybe this N540 just doesn't like being compressed. It seemed like our first two charge weights, even you know, without the suppressor, gave the most impressive groups. And then we start getting up into the compressed stuff and it all kind of falls apart. Now our standard deviations got better as we got more compressed. The biggest group of the day, the very top right, that had a 3.6 feet per second standard deviation and an, and an extreme spread of eight. Now that's not worth much when it's a two inch group but that's what we saw. Now, the secondary purpose of this video to you know evaluate the whole charge weight range with this powder with and without the suppressor, I mean, you can clearly see here, the groups tightened up dramatically when we put the suppressor on. Our biggest group with the suppressor, 1.3, what is it? 1.386 inches is smaller than our best group without the suppressor. And that's what's, that's what's prompting this upcoming video on barrel harmonics and barrel damping. Every gun I throw a suppressor on, it shoots better groups and I'm trying to get to the root cause. Is it simply the additional weight or is something else going on there? So I'm putting up this, this Grindle video. I'm also putting up a 223 video, planning to put them, put these two up on the same day. And then after that, the next video is going to be this barrel harmonics testing. So if you're looking for that, wondering why I haven't posted it yet, I mean, this was part of that video basically. And so is the 223 video that's going up today. But our primary test cartridge in that video is going to be 6.5 Creedmoor. But the problem follows me to every cartridge I shoot, it seems. So, all right, I'm rambling with no direction here. So that means it's time to end this video. I've got some other bullets coming for the Grendel. We need to get away from this 140, right? This is fun to play with, but it's really not a particularly useful round. 140 grain bullet going 2200 feet per second is not exactly what the Grendel was built for. So I wanna test some 130s next. There's some really excellent 130 grain match bullets from Hornady and Berger and others that I've never tried in any of my Grendels. So that's probably the direction we're headed next. The 140 has been fun, but yeah, it's time to move on. So that's it folks. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.